Welcome to video number eight in the series where we create the ultimate artificial intelligence operating system using Linux Mint and all open source and local software. Today, I'm gonna ramp it up a notch or maybe I should say tweak it a notch by using something completely custom. As part of this playlist I had in the back of my head, I wanted to include something of my own. So I did spend a few days coding up a custom Python application and we now have a built-in local AI enabled voice assistant for our ultimate AI operating system. I'm gonna walk you guys through how to get this installed. I've put it up on my GitHub page. I'm gonna give you some pointers and some tips and a couple quick demonstrations. And then you guys, I really hope you try it out. Give me some feedback and maybe we can collaborate to make this thing the next Jarvis. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, your first stop is the GitHub link in the description. So go ahead and open that up and then click on code and copy that link. Next stop is the terminal. So fire up a terminal. If you guys have been following around, following along, excuse me, you should already have an AI directory. So go ahead and CD into AI. And if we do an LS, we can see all our cool stuff we built so far, but you wanna do a git space clone and then paste in the link for today's project. That'll only take a second and you'll pull down the repository into your AI directory. CD into that new directory assistant, I'm sorry, assist mint. You like my play on words, don't you? All right, so we ls, we see there is a readme. So let's go ahead and open that up in our file explorer and crack open that readme file. We're gonna use this as reference and a clipboard to copy paste commands into, I should say copy commands from. All right, so go ahead and copy that first command. Feel free to pause and read through my description there. But the first thing we're gonna do is create the virtual environment. Again, if you've been following along, you know we do this for almost all of our projects, either that or we containerize them in another manner. All right, second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna activate that virtual environment. So we're gonna use the source space, assist mint emv slash bin slash activate and now we see that we have our virtual environment active all right head back to that notepad file there and do a copy of the third command and that is the sudo apt git install socks so we're going to use socks in here to do a little bit of audio transformation um, i found that the playback was too slow for me so i did speed it up to a 1.5 um, so just note that if you're going to follow along exactly what i've done here then you're going to want to go ahead and install socks all right, so the next thing we're gonna do is run a pip install-r requirements.txt. I did create a nice requirements.txt file for you guys. So if we cat that, we see that we have five requirements there. So go ahead and paste in that command, pip install-r requirements.txt. This will take a little time and we'll be back when that's done to move on to our next command. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Just use the clear command, hit enter, clear up your, clean up your terminal there so you got a nice little working space. All right, our next command we're gonna do is a wget. And what we're doing here, guys, is we're downloading the VOSC model. So this is part of the speech recognition, the uh, speech to text. So this will take a second to download, not very long. Uh, next thing we do need to do here, guys, is unzip that. So go ahead and copy that unzip command and run that and that'll unzip it. And we are specifying the destination in there, VOSC model, which is part of our code. So make sure you have that extracted to the VOSC model directory. All right, next up, we're gonna run a chmod plus X on a couple of files. If you've been following along, you probably already know what I'm getting at here. So I created a startassistance.sh, which is a bash script that will launch the application for us, but it obviously needs the executable permissions. And then we also created in typical fashion of the series, a handy desktop icon. So like I said, if you've been following along, you know that you need to do a chmod plus X on both of these files. So I've provided you those commands, just paste them in. And now you have the correct permissions on there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to move the provided PNG file, the icon file into our icons directory. If you've been following along, you know that you have an AI directory and then you have an icons directory. If not, you're gonna to wanna to create those directories. So under your home, you're gonna create AI and then create icons underneath that. Okay, so this will move the icons, this will move the PNG file to the correct icons directory and then it will also move the desktop icon to the desktop. And now for demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate this virtual environment. And then we can test out our desktop application, which in return essentially launches the bash script. So we're testing both of those effectively. All right, so a simple double click on that desktop icon and we see that this is loading up. So behind the scenes, it's doing everything in that bash script, including activating that virtual environment for Python. So we'll give it a second, this should fire up and there you go. 
Okay, I've zoomed this in for us. Now the first thing you have to do is select your microphone. You'll be presented with a list of all your microphones and then I coded in an option to where you can select voice or type. Now, when I was building this up, there was a lot of things that I just wanted to type in so that I can put manual entries and test things. But for the most part, I would envision people using the voice. So select your microphone and then type in voice. Once you hit enter, you will be presented with a voice mode here. I've paused the video to do a quick explanation. There's several phrases that you can use to interact with this. Mainly today, the way it's coded, you can add things to the calendar, remove things from the calendar, query your calendar, clear your calendar for specific days, weeks, etc. Also, you can interact with Jan AI to have a voice command interaction and audible feedback or response from the artificial intelligence large language models. I'll update the readme file so you have all the particular commands. What's on my calendar? For which date or week? Tomorrow. Here are your events for Thursday, August 29, 2024. Workout at 7 in the morning on Thursday, August 29. Birthday party at 9 in the morning on Thursday, August 29. Put this on my calendar. What is the event? Dentist appointment. What time does the event start? 2 p.m. What time does the event end? 3 p.m. What date is the event on? Tomorrow. The event dentist appointment has been added to your calendar. Remove an event from my calendar. What is the name of the event you'd like to remove? Birthday party. What date is this event on? Tomorrow. The event birthday party on 29 August 2024 has been removed from your calendar. What's on my calendar? For which date or week? Tomorrow. Here are your events for Thursday, August 29. 2024. Workout at 7 in the morning on Thursday, August 29. Dentist appointment at 2 in the afternoon on Thursday, August 29. Clear my calendar. For which date or week would you like to clear your calendar? Tomorrow. All events on Thursday, August 29 have been cleared from your calendar. What's on my calendar? For which date or week? Tomorrow. You have no events on your calendar for Thursday, August 29, 2024. What's on my calendar? For which date or week? Next week. You have no events on your calendar for the week of Monday, September 2 through Sunday, September 8. Ask Jan. What would you like to ask Jan? Tell me the history of trains. The history of trains dates back to the early 19th century. The first successful steam-powered railway locomotive was built by Richard Trevithick in 1804, but it didn't have a practical application until George Defenson's rocket won the Rainhill Trials in 1829. The first public railway, the Stockton and Darlington Railway, opened in 1825. This line used horse-drawn carriages and locomotives. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway, also built by George Stephenson, was the first intercity railway and opened in 1830. In the United States, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, chartered in 1827, is considered the first common carrier railroad and started operation in 1830. The first transcontinental railroad, the Northern Pacific Railway, was completed in 1883. The Industrial Revolution greatly boosted the development of railways as a means of transporting goods and people. The steam locomotive dominated until the early 20th century when diesel and electric locomotives were introduced. In the 21st century, high-speed trains like the Shinkansen in Japan and the Eurostar in Europe have revolutionized intercity travel, providing fast and efficient transport. Today, trains continue to play a significant role in transportation, particularly for freight and long-distance travel. What's on my calendar? For which date or week? Next week. Events for the week of Monday, September 2 through Sunday, September 8. Party at 9 in the morning on Monday, September 2. Workout with Mike Tyson at 10 in the morning on Wednesday, September 4. Clear my calendar. For which date or week would you like to clear your calendar? Next week. All events for the week of Monday, September 2 through Sunday, September 8 have been cleared from your calendar. What's on my calendar? For which date or week? Next week. You have no events on your calendar for the week of Monday, September 2 through Sunday, September 8. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it. That's what we have thus far as far as the Assist Mint, which is my own custom Linux Mint. Really, you could use this on another distribution as well, but my own custom Linux AI Voice Assistant. Now, I will give you a heads up, and I'm not going to lie, I did speed up some parts of this video, especially when you asked Jan a question. It took over a minute to get the response. So I'm not sure how practical this is, but I still think it's really cool. I mean, if there are people out there that just don't have access to the internet, or maybe that costs a lot for them to use data in some parts of wherever they're at, you still have the ability to chat via voice with an AI assistant and interact with a lot of these open source large language models using Jan AI or something similar. Uh, the calendar management took me quite a while, I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot of the voice stuff that just wasn't working. I had to do conversions of you know, um, text words of numbers to actual numerical values and dates and things like that, but I had fun doing it, so definitely learned a few things doing that. Um, I think it's kind of cool that you can have a total offline assistant to manage your calendar, put things on there, clear your calendar, all that good stuff. And by the way, I did go ahead and update the readme file on the GitHub. So I have a total overview of all the different commands as they sit today. But I'm not sure how much more effort I'm going to put into this until I get some feedback. If anyone out there wants to collaborate, they think this is cool or useful, definitely let me know. I would love to collaborate and further develop this assistment. Uh, if not, like I said, I had a lot of fun building it. And I mentioned earlier on the video, I really did want to do something to where I contributed something of my own to this playlist and this project. So, hey, I hope you guys are following along. I have a couple more ideas, but not sure how many more videos will be in this series. Give me some more feedback, though. Do you guys want to see anything else in particular? I know there was more talks about like integrating Koki to interact with Jan and stuff like that. I feel like we did cover that um, pretty much directly in this video, right? I showed you guys how it's a, it is possible to use Python as an orchestration method to interact between all these different applications that we have installed. Um, I think all of them have an API available. So Stable Diffusion, Roop, all of them. So you could just continue to develop this and then add voice commands to, hey, make me a song using Music Gen or create a sound effect using Audio Gen. And then we could pipe in the, the correct API calls and things like that. So, I mean, really, <laughs> your imagination is your limitation in this sense, right? But yeah, let me know what you guys thought. I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video. One of the reasons is I've been working on this. Um, but another reason is I've been working on a custom Halloween animatronic, which is really cool. I'll have a video up on that. I did a couple little sneak peek, sneak peek shorts on my Facebook, and I think I put one on YouTube. Uh, but I've got this on a full size skeleton now. It's a six foot or a five and a half foot skeleton. And it actually hooks into ChatGPT 4.0 mini. And you get some really cool interactions, but I'm gonna build on top of that. I'm actually gonna construct a small control box and make it look like, I don't know, a haunted treasure box, but it'll be an interactive animatronic, which I think is really cool. I remember as a kid going to like different houses for Christmas and they had things where you can actually press a button and it did things. So that's my idea right now. This guy's gonna be either holding a microphone or he'll have a microphone hidden somewhere. And then you'll have a control box with two or three, maybe more arcade buttons of different colors. And then when he detects motion, he'll say, hey, step right up, press the blue button to ask me any question, press the green button for a joke, press the red button for a scary story or whatever, right? But something to where he's highly interactive um, and hopefully provides a really good experience for the kids in the neighborhood. So stick around for that. If you guys haven't subbed already, like I said, make sure you do subscribe and like. And uh, as always, really appreciate all the support. Stick around until the next video. I've got more content coming soon. I hope you all have a great day. Take care.